Hey guys, welcome to this introduction to Quick to Form. Uh, I just have a little time lapse here um, as I narrate over it, showing some of the new features. And I just wanted to talk about what Quick to Form is. So, Quick to Form originally started out as a tool just to put modifiers on an object. For example, if you want to put a remesh really quickly, you want a mirror array. And over time, we we're building it out to be more of a like a design tool to add variation. So in this case, I'm showing one of those design tools, which is basically a Photoshop uh, smudge brush set to hardness 100%. And you can just um, drag it out and it'll remesh every time you let go of the mouse. And I'll show you later on in the video how to actually set that up. But there's just an example. Um, there's lattice, there's remeshing, there's mirroring and arraying and uh, lofting. The loft is procedural. Here I'm showing this lattice feature. So quick to form really it works together with quick shape and quick curve, but you don't have to use it together. Um, you can just put it on any geometry, get some variation, apply some modifiers really quickly. Everything comes with a little visual gizmo. Um, here's the loft part where I built out some nerves curves, and then you can see you can just loft it really quickly, and it stays procedural. This is using geometry nodes, so you can change the um, Geometry here, I'll show it in a second. Yeah, so here you can go into the curve and edit it and it'll all update. So yeah, just uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna switch over to the real-time version now. So I wanted to start by talking about this new Control-Shift-F Pi menu we have. Uh, since quick to form takes up a lot of hotkeys, you can actually go and disable all of those and just use this pie menu. You can set it to whatever key you'd like, and it has all the tools. So just like you saw in the time lapse there, and I talked about how the quick grab is the, like the newest tool that we have. So let's start there. So once you launch it, you can use Control Shift G or in the pie menu there, you can basically select the object and move it. And this is just basically the grab brush from sculpt mode. But let me uh, start by showing you actually in edit mode, I always did not enjoy turning this proportional editing on to do this kind of thing because it just drives me crazy that you have to move it before you can see the brush size. And then going into sculpt mode is pretty annoying because if you have two objects, you have to go into sculpt mode, switch to the grab brush, move it, and then go into object mode, go back into sculpt mode, move it on this one. So I made this grab tool which lets you just do this very intuitively and very nicely it has all the useful settings you know pr project through if you just want to have a fall off uh, turn it on if you just want to affect everything inside the radius you can change the radius this is the fall off with control G here you see the UIs here and Really the coolest thing that I wanted to show from this was something that was kind of a happy accident. Uh, I realized if you turn on in the Control Shift F menu, if you turn on voxel resolution, since I basically built out like a new move tool, I'm in control of, kind of I'm aware of when I've let go of the mouse. So I can make it remesh every time I let go. So this is only activated again if voxel resolution is above zero. And this is what you saw in the demo with the gun. So Control Shift G. Now as I move it, this is going to remesh. So this, as you saw with the gun, and you can do this on so many different type of objects. This is basically like uh, using the smudge brush in Photoshop with 100% hardness. I just found this so cool and so unique and useful. You can remesh everything together and yeah, just keep going. So like I said, um, I think quick to form is kind of turning into just a general design variation tool. And a lot of the new tools that we'll be building for quick to form are gonna um, show, demonstrate that. So now let's jump right into the next one, which is Lattice. So the nice thing about Lattice is that you can use the middle mouse wheel to just scroll up and add a bunch of divisions, or if you want to affect 
uh, just one of them you can press for example q and it'll just do this one you just move it left and right left mouse and confirm if you're in this mode you can just press b to do box select and then do all your stuff you have all the useful settings like smooth interpolation or linear um so this axis align let me show you you can uh, exit any you can basically cancel any quick to form tool by pressing control x and then uh, to confirm it, you can press enter, but that will keep the modifier. The modifier is on the object. And if you were to press control shift X to launch the lattice, if you press, well, let's make a change here. If you were to press control enter, that's gonna confirm it and apply the modifier, and de delete the lattice. So, you can also use the lattice in edit mode. Let's try monkey here, make a selection. You just press Control Shift X. It'll apply just only to the parts that were selected at the time. I wanted to share one more thing about the lattice. While there are other lattice add-ons for Blender, they tend to, at least all the ones I've seen, um, they'll work if an object is rotated like this, just like ours only if the transformations are not applied so if you do apply the transformations we have a special setting here uh, pressing v and it'll try and do an alignment so this is really cool and a huge time saver if you are bringing an object in from a different program you don't have the rotation set up or it's all just zeroed out you can still have this lattice that's created automatically snapped to your object and you're just ready to go and make edits. So now let's look into the loft tool that we have. So I'm just going to start by making some circles, select everything. Now, in this quick loft menu, these are your segments, which you can change after the fact. And make solid is just going to fill the caps and just basically create like a fully solid water type mesh. So let's do that. Now, the cool thing is that. You can change this. Everything's live, it's procedural. And what I really like the most about this loft workflow is that you just can't really make these types of shapes very easily in uh, quick tools. You know, unless we're talking about like modeling it just with regular uh, polygon modeling or sculpting. Quick shape and quick curve is kind of for, even though it's drawing in 3D, you're still technically drawing in 2D because you know, you're not in VR, you don't have six degrees of uh, freedom. So these kinds of forms are really great to make in uh, with loft, and then you can just go on top, add details with quick curve or quick shape, and get into it and all that. So for simple things like mirroring and arraying, we also have a tool. Uh, if you press Control X, that will bring up the mirror, or you can also find it in the Control Shift F menu. So the thing to really pay attention to here is this X use cursor or use active origin. Um, in this case, you can't actually see the difference. Let me move this over. So let's launch it from here. So right now, it is on 3D cursor. If we press V, it will switch over here. So everything is kind of visual and live. If you just left click, it will confirm on one of the gizmos. If you hold shift, it will keep it live and then you can left click to do a multiple axis mirror. Then you can change this at any time. Back here. Boom. Parent will, uh, so basically when you, the default one is, see it kind of merges in together. If you use parent, it will, the mirror will move and you won't be able to bring them inward. Let's reset this. So same tools with the radial array. If you want to switch this over to array, you press two, you have a nice visual gizmo. You can use the middle mouse wheel, but first you have to choose an axis. So you basically click on one of these lines and you can start rotating it. And now the middle mouse will adjust the copies. And what I mean, what I mean by rotating is like, if, I'm, if you spin the left mouse or the mouse while left uh, button is pressed, but I just use the middle mouse generally. And then if you 
switch over to this one, it'll change the axis. Same with this one. And then you can always press three to get linear array. Again, you have nice visual gizmo. If you move it out, you can spin the wheel to increase the copies or use the middle mouse wheel. So now I wanna show how you can use mirror and array and some of these other modifiers to create variations of an existing design that you have. So in this case, I'm just starting with a kit batch piece from the big, medium, small, medieval pack. So I, it's already really good, you know, and sometimes you just need in your scene, add a little variation. So let's press Control X and do our mirror. Now, one thing that's really cool is because of the bisect and the way the mirror works, you can move this and basically extend it you know, without uh, another piece of geometry being here. Just blends right in. And now let's fire up the linear array. Move this over. Get it right, maybe here. Let's do a couple copies, let's say eight, sure, press enter. And now, we can do a quick bend. And it's actually pretty annoying to do a, a bend with this modifier, like without quick deform, because we're doing a couple things to just set up, set it up right, so that you have this little visual gizmo and it actually bends the way that you want it to bend. So what it does is this gizmo is the axis that it's bending around. So if we want to bend it into a circle, we imagine that this Z is what it's bending around so we can just drag on this. Now, it's a little bit slow because of the material. But as you move it up and down, you can see it is bending. Let's just... That's right. There. Again, the end bend has the same active geo cursor. Um, I'll cover these in a different one. So let's press enter, confirm. And now to enhance this even further, we can go and press control shift X, bring up our lattice, go to side view here, and just scale this out. Create some kind of new form. And I wanted to mention that if at any point you want to add, like let's say you want to add more divisions to the lattice, you know, you don't ever have to go into the menu or anything. You can just select the lattice, press Control Shift X, and that will bring up the settings again. You can scroll the divisions up, get some more. Then let's say we want to grab this because this looks weird. Let's scale it out. There we go, press Enter. Okay, so let's just hide the lattice for now. Now we've got a brand new design here, just starting from this simple asset. We've built, built a variation here, something new, something cool. And that's what quick deform is all about. So circling back to bend, since we just glossed over it, we have uh, some other settings here, like taper, and they all work basically the same way. So in this case, this is actually a pretty useful one. They're all just, you know, applying the modifier, just having a nice visual representation. This is a really cool one as well. And again, everything is based off of the cursor or the origin setting here. It's a really good example of how the, how it's gonna look different. Bending around here compared to bending around the origin. So in this section of the Pi menu, it's dedicated to the voxel remeshing. So first, let me just start by saying why it was important to make these. So when you want to remesh, um, you know, if you add a modifier, you can't really get the preview like you can when you go into sculpt mode. And I think it's Shift R, yeah, Shift R, and you can have this little preview, which is very useful. But for I don't understand why it doesn't actually remesh once you do that. Like this just changes the preview. Then you have to do this and then press Control R to actually do the remeshing. 
So we have a solution here, which is a macro. You do this voxel resize remesh. And you can set it, and then once you left click, it will also remesh. Let's pull that on uh, this. Resize remesh. This, and it's been remeshed. If you don't want to um, set the set the size, uh, you can just press voxel remesh, and it'll just do the determined size that's here, which you can also change. And then voxel modifier will do a preview, but then add it in a modifier form, which is very useful. There's basically no way to do this in Blender without this macro that we made. And then the next thing, so let's say that you remesh. By the way, I'm not mentioning the hotkeys, but I'm just kind of using everything in the Pi menu, but all the hotkeys are right here. So I'm gonna press Control R. And now if I go into Smooth right here, I can do a quick Smooth. And this is just gonna apply a smoothing top. But you can also do it as a macro, which is right, right here. So first, we are setting the resolution, left click, it automatically remeshes, and now as I move left and right, it's smoothing. And it has the same things where if you press Control Enter, it will apply, versus uh, just pressing Enter will keep the modifiers live. I wanted to mention that while Quick Deform is in fact its own tool, and you can use it with Box Cutter and Hard Ops or any other add-on, and it's still you know useful to do that. You can st you still have access to Quick Grab. You have the modifiers here. There are you have the remesh. Uh, there are some things which are only for Quick Shape and Quick Curve, and those are going to be this section, this guide section, and the procedural UVs is for Quick Texture. However, you can in fact use this to create a procedural UV object, but it's really only useful for putting quick textures on them because of uh, how that's set up. I just wanted to cover that. So if you guys are familiar with quick texture at all, you'll know that we have a special modifier set up here that gives you procedural UVs on the modifier level, which means that as you model, it will continue to continuously unwrap. So you know, in order to avoid having to set all this up, which can be really annoying because there's you know, six empties that have to be rotated in a specific way, uh, we made a little helper thing here for Quick Deform. So if you were to select your object and press Quick Procedural UVs, it will set up all these empties for you. Uh, if they didn't exist in the scene, it would have made them. And it creates this modifier and hooks everything up properly. And now you can go in and on this object apply a material and everything's gonna be updating because this setup was created for you. Now let's get through the remaining modifiers. So we have solidify. As you move your mouse left and right, you just add a little solidify modifier. You see the one, two, three in the lower left. Very useful. Again, enter to confirm. Delete that. Uh, the next one is quick tubes. Move it left and right, and you just uh, add some tubes. It'll uh, just take all the edges, make them curves. This is a decimate, so you have a 50%, you have a 70%, and you have an extreme 90% decimate. And now, so if you notice, or really just any object you make, it has a pivot, and it's, there's really no great way to edit that pivot. Like you have to move the cursor and then move the pivot to the cursor, it's kind of annoying. So we have a tool here called Quick Pivot, and it just creates a visual gizmo here for your pivot, so you can just move it, and you're actually moving your pivot right now. So you can do this. Um, you can also, right here, this thing is blocking it right now, uh, you can press W and it's going to project. So let's say that you wanted the pivot right here, like it's an elbow. Press W and it will fire array and project it on there. And then you can continue to move it after the fact. So let's press enter and you'll see the pivot is now at the elbow and you can rotate it. 